What if Megalodon sharks came back tomorrow? It's a wonderful concept. I've always wondered this. What would happen if they came back tomorrow? What do you guys would think would happen? Not much. They'd probably die out pretty quickly because they can't survive in today's ecosystem. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. They would fucking die. They'd die out again. Yeah, good, good, good comments. Let's see what this channel thinks would happen. A lot of people have a fear of the ocean. Believe me, there are a number of massive creatures lurking in the waters that you don't want to mess with, like sharks, giant squids, and blood sucking fish. But I think when people think of the ocean, they automatically blood associate. Blood sucking fish? What blood sucking fish are there in the ocean? I know leeches in freshwater. Today, let's see what would happen if these sharks were currently alive and swimming along in our waters. If you've seen the movie The Meg, then you must know somewhat about this guy. Even if the movie was a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> Megalodon Isn't that were... the movie where the bottom of the Mariana Trench has another trench inside of it, and the Megalodon has been living in there that whole time, and they accidentally drilled through and released this giant beast, which then fights Jason Statham? Is it that movie? <laughs> it's a bit exaggerated. In 2008, a joint research team from Australia and the US used computer simulations to calculate Megalodon's biting power. So a modern great white shark clamps its jaw shut at about 1.8 tons of force per square inch, whereas the Megalodon chomped down on its prey with a force of between 10.8. This is just Megalodon facts. I want to know what would happen if they came back tomorrow. I want to know how they would survive and destroy our ecosystems and everybody would panic and there'd be a huge government and thing. Eight, it's estimated that a megalodon ate about 2,500 pounds of food each day. Now that is a lot of food. <laughs> if it came back, then there would be barely enough large fish in the ocean for us. The meg would get it all. Also, they loved it. That's a bold assumption. If a giant shark came back, it would outcompete us. There are orcas out there, and we outcompete orcas pretty heavily. And I think orcas are far more efficient and intelligent predators than megalodons would have ever been. I think it's pretty uh, interesting to say that the shark would outcompete humans. Humans are pretty good at competing with animals <laughs> to the point where we literally kill everything. Packing. In the movie The Meg, the shark then goes to terrorize all boats in the water, destroying anything in its path. Now, it's hard to say how aggressive they would be towards humans since we weren't alive to document them back then. How aggressive they would be towards humans? Well, let's think about how aggressive modern sharks are towards humans. Oh, they're not. Okay. Assume that they won't be friendly. First off, if people were spending the day this animation? Or fishing or even just chillaxing in the waters, and all of a sudden someone made that animation back, just for the, sh <laughs> the shark to swim by. Of, but also, scientists would want to study them. Hey, maybe they would want to capture them and hold them for experiments, which would end badly as well. And deaths by this thing would be gnarly. Since they're so big, they could just swallow you whole. It would be dark and nasty. And there are so many things that can swallow us whole that just don't because we're human beings. It's just so... I don't know. I don't even know what to say. It's just stupid. If, in reality, if an actual, like, group of megalodons came back to life right now, they would quickly starve. Quickly. The type of things that they were used to hunting and eating just don't exist, and they would have to exert far too much energy to receive the energy that they need, right? Like, eating is all about energy. It's about using as little energy as possible to gain as much energy from food. If you have to catch a bunch of little things when you're used to just being, like, you know, a big game hunter, you're fucked. There. And it would be hard to breathe due to lack of oxygen and an increase in methane gas. <laughs> it's a as funny shark's picture. muscles constrict you in and out Jason to help force you no way. down their body, you'd start to feel its acid beginning to eat away at your skin. That would be horrible. I love I that like one. <laughs> that animation. People have used that animation in proof, in Megalodon proof videos. We've seen that in like one or two proof videos, that just shitty animation <laughs> render of the shark coming out and into the water. Into little pieces. So basically, humans would stay out of the ocean. There's no way you would catch me swimming and splashing around knowing that that monstrosity was out there and hungry. Interesting. That's fair. I probably, 
I mean, I don't go in the ocean anyways, but I could understand not wanting to go in the ocean for the fucking week that these things would be alive before they died off. But hey, maybe this would be a good thing to restore the ocean's ecosystem. Less human interference what? means it will have time to heal itself. In fact, in a 2016 study, a team of international scientists found that a common chemical in many sunscreens is highly toxic to corals and other marine life. Well, Same yeah. with makeup and other lotions or stuff that we have on our body while- the main issue is pollution dumped into the ocean and plastic and stuff like that, not us interacting with the ocean. If everyone stopped going in the water, the ecosystems would not suddenly restore themselves. We enter the oceans. There's a lot of pros and cons here. Pros, the ecosystem would heal because less human interference, maybe even less fishing. Cons, whales and dolphins would be put at risk from this predator. Plus, a number of countries rely on the fishing industry for a source of income. If they can't really fish in the ocean, their whole livelihood is put at risk. <laughs> Does that mean that lakes would then be overcrowded with fishermen? Since lakes are smaller than the ocean, the fish population would be depleted very quickly. Now, here's a question that I have. What? If the Megalodon does just randomly come back tomorrow, does that mean that other prehistoric extinct creatures would come back too? Like the Titanoboa or the Me Fixes the carp issue? Would it? Would this fix the carp issue? If, say for example, prehistoric predator in the ocean, for some reason we don't want to fish. Somehow, the, no, I think carp would just take over even harder. We would just eat a lot of them. Mega crocodile, aka Dinosuchus. These creatures were horrifying. Why well, she's just I mean, talking about a completely different thing now? Literally means terrible crocodile. They could grow to be around 36 feet long, and they weighed around seven. How tons. did we get here? This Why are we talking about Dinosuchus? Around 72 to 83 million years ago in the U.S. as well as Mexico. In fact, it's said that the Dinosuchus would often battle dinosaurs. That's right, and they would win. Fossils of T-Rexes have revealed teeth marks from these animals. So yeah, this animal literally took on the king of dinosaurs. This means that their jaws had enough power to take down a huge dinosaur like a T-Rex. Now, the Titanoboa, on the other hand, was 50 feet long and- Just talking about random extinct- This is just- This person played Ark. <laughs> this person played Ark Survival Evolved and was like, Hey, wait a minute. You want to know what life would be like if Megalodons and Titanoboas and Dinosuchuses just randomly spawned in around you? Play Ark. And weighed around 2,500 pounds. In fact, they are referred to as one of the biggest and baddest predators on Earth. These snakes plagued the Earth around 60 million years ago, just after dinosaurs went extinct. They were also known as crushing machines because they would wrap around their prey and crush them with ease. That means we would have to worry about the- Dinosuchus didn't live at the same time as a T. Rex. I mean, I wasn't gonna fact check her because I don't know enough about uh, about dinosaurs. But it sounded weird to me that they would have found bite marks in a T. Rex fossil and somehow known and identified it as Dinosuchus teeth. It sounded odd to me, but I wasn't gonna question it. Generally, when I don't have enough information or I don't know enough about the thing, I won't question it. But it certainly didn't sound right. My school taught me that stegosauruses and T-Rex lived together. What's that fact where it's like we lived closer to T-Rexes than stegosauruses did? That's not your school's fault. That's a uh, that's, uh, Jurassic Park. Also, these terrifying beasts. We'd have to find a way to either capture I just these assumed, bad boys. I always just assumed that everything when I was a kid, that everything in Jurassic Park lived during the Jurassic period. And then all the other periods had all sorts of crazy stuff that we didn't even talk about. And that Jurassic Park was just the Jurassic period. Of course, that was not true. <laughs> and now Jurassic Park is like genetically engineered dinosaurs. Shark attacks are fairly uncommon, and most shark attacks happen when they're confused or provoked. Maybe we would be able to live side by side with no fear. It's hard to say <laughs> when we've never- What is this, Anna? Where do they find these animations? What the fuck is this? To live side by side with no fear. <laughs> it's hard to say when we've never encountered a Meg before. All we know about them we get from studying their fossils, and fossils of other sea creatures they interacted with. But what do you Now that's an actually interesting, leave it to chat to come up with an actually interesting question. Would megalodons have tonic immobility? I don't know the origin of the gene that's in tonic immobility. So I don't know if it would go that far back or if it's a recent evolution. If it's a recent evolution, then probably not. But if that's a gene that's existed in sharks for a while, maybe you could just flip the Meg over and then it'd just be like a little guy. You could pet his belly and everything. Overall, just a whole lot of nothingness. Oh, this only got 4,000 views. Okay, let's go. Oh my God. 
This channel has 2 million subscribers and this video got 4,000 views. Talk about botting, or botting subscribers. Imagine having 1.6 million subscribers and averaging 2,000 views on a video. That's crazy. They, had, they do have some videos that did super well, but I guess nowadays they're struggling. Damn, that sucks. That's gonna be me one day. I'm making fun of this now, but one day you're gonna see Zach in like 10 years posting Fish React for like the 10,000th time, 1,000 viewers. I'm gonna be like, please like and subscribe. <laughs>